Hello, this is uh, Sam Akhavan from Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the loop and tack uh, procedure. This is a procedure we've been doing for about eight years now down in Pittsburgh. Uh, we've done several studies on it, uh, which I'm going to talk a little bit about. We are going to demonstrate the suture tape link suture for use with the loop and tack stitch. We have a bovine tendon here uh, that we're going to use for this. Some of the key features of this stitch is that it has a two and a half inch or about a 50 to 60 millimeter loop that is ideal for going around tissues. So the key aspect to this stitch is the first part, which is just a standard loop. So you essentially, after in intra-articularly, will pass this, uh, the suture around the tendon and then pass the suture through its, uh, its loop. So you're going to see that here. Uh, once this is tightened, what we're going to do here is we're going to use the penetrator to pierce through the tendon and then grasp the suture on the other side. One of the key aspects of this procedure is where you make your anterior portal as it will be make the procedure significantly simpler. It is key to place the portal in a position where you can easily access below and above the biceps to be able to easily be able to pass sutures above and below. The other key to this portal is you have to be able to access the top portion of the intraarticular groove. We are going to be placing our anchor at the top portion right above the subscapularis tendon at the most distally visualized portion of the intraarticular groove. And Placing your portal medial, and, uh, medial enough will allow you to have access to that top portion of the intraarticular portion of the biceps. Once we have verified that that's where we want to make our portal, we're going to go ahead and come in with a switching stick in order to still make sure that we are piercing the shoulder at the spot where we want to be. Again, checking to make sure that I can easily access above, below the biceps, and reach the top portion of the intraarticular groove. We are then going to come in with a purple cannula. One of the key reasons I like this purple cannula is it allows for mobility. Uh, for most of my shoulders, I will use a Gemini cannula. Uh, however, in this case, the Gemini cannula can decrease your mobility to be able to reach the top of the groove. With this 7x7 purple cannula, allows us easy access above and below and allows for increased mobility in order to provide us access to the top of the subscapularis tendon at the most distally visualized portion of the intraarticular groove. We are going to go ahead and create our loop intact knot using this grasping bird beak. Uh, the great aspect of this bird beak is it has teeth at the end that will allow you to easily grasp the suture. I have put the loop over the shaft of the bird beak and now I'm going to grab the tail end using the, the uh, tooth portion of this bird beak. We are now going to reintroduce the suture over the top of the biceps and come underneath and grab any part of the suture that is exposed to create our luggage tag. Because we have the loop over the top of the shaft, the luggage tag is going to be created at this point. This is actually the key portion of the case as the tension on the biceps is determined at this point. If you are trying to put less tension on the biceps, you are going to try to put this loop closer to the insertion at the top of the superior labrum. If you want to replicate the tension closer to what the native tension of the biceps is, you are actually going to put the loop further down. The one thing about putting it further down that may complicate it is you will have less biceps left distally in order to create your tack but this is where you will determine the tension of your biceps. I prefer to take the biceps slightly off tension, so I'm going to use this cannula as a suture, uh, as a kind of a knot pusher to push my knot closer to the insertion of the biceps. And this is where my luggage tag is going to be created. At this stage, we're going to reintroduce the suture from the suture tape fiber link by grasping it with the bird beak and reinserting it below the biceps this time. Once the suture has been dropped, we can use the tip of our bird beak to pierce through the center of the biceps, where we're going to go ahead and grasp any part of the suture and finish up our loop and tack knot. At this stage, um, you can use these curved cutters that are available both in left as well as right. 
One of the great advantages of this is it allows you to cut the biceps while staying away from the tip of your suture. One of the key ways that this knot can actually fail is if you cut the biceps too close to the suture, the, the looped end, the luggage tag end, can actually slip over the top of the biceps. So you want to make sure that you, have, you leave yourself enough bicep stump so that does not happen. At this stage, we're, I'm going to go ahead and cut this biceps as close to the top of the superior labrum as possible. You can see the top end of the scissor over the top of the biceps to make sure that you're not cutting any other tissue. Once the biceps is cut, we are now ready to fix it. Where you fix the biceps is actually very important. I like to do it just anterior to the supraspinatus tendon and just superior to the subscapularis tendon. In essence, it's at the most distally visualized portion of the intraarticular groove. Coming in here with our punch, we're going to come right above the top of the subscapularis tendon right here, and we're going to go ahead and mallet this in. At this stage, you want to make sure that your swivel lock anchor is loaded with your suture prior to removing your punch. At this stage, we're going to insert our swivel lock anchor into place and bring it right above the top where our hole is. We're going to go ahead and pull a little tension on the suture to kind of tension our biceps in place and then mallet the anchor down. If you were to do this as part of a subscapularis tendon, uh, we would go ahead and incorporate both sets of sutures into the eyelet prior to tightening this down. We're going to go ahead and pull our sutures, and we'll go ahead and cut our suture with the arthroscopic scissors. At this point, I'd like to insert my Apollo RF probe to actually mushroom the tip of the biceps and take the very top of the biceps back so that very little stump is left. You can then look at the top of the, of the superior labrum and resect the excess biceps from that end as well. And this will be your loop intact tenodesis.